Hello guys, how are you doing tonight? It is now April the 17th. It's about 1 a.m. Central Standard Time on a Tuesday. Can you guys hear me fine? I really don't want to start the video over. Microphone, can you hear me? I was wondering if you want to talk about some BTC. Do you guys like that song? It's a really good song. It's one of my favorite songs. I, I actually made it up right now on the spot. If you guys have heard of other imitations of it, you know, like it, it's all it's all fake. Just so you guys know, I'm actually the original person who came up with that song and composed it. And um, yeah, it's it's a really, really good song. OK, I like to play it on my computer, the computer that sings to me. Do you guys know what kind of computer sings to you, especially that song I just sang? The, the computer that sings to you would obviously be Adele, okay? The, Adele is the best brand that sings and says hello to you, just in case you guys didn't know that before, okay? <laughs> okay, let's talk about some Bitcoin. So I tried to actually live stream this just a few minutes ago, but it actually didn't go too well. I'm using a new VPN, and it's actually lagging a little bit right now, so I'm still kind of configuring my network and my security right now. So... I just want to tell you guys that, um, well, first of all, I hope you guys don't mind me doing this in the dark, okay? I, um, I, I like to kind of hang out at night in the dark when I trade. I'm not really um, a full lights on kind of person when I, tr when I trade. And I apologize for being gone for, uh, it might have been a day or two, actually. It was Laos New Year's between the 14th and the 16th. And it's a time for, um, yeah, we have our Laos New Year's over three days, and I like to spend time with my family and friends. And um, and actually on Sunday, was it Sunday? No, yeah, it was like it was like Sunday. I was I was pretty drunk on Sunday. I have to admit, okay, I was drunk by like one o'clock in the afternoon, I think. So I needed like a good day of recovery as well. And um, I just want to make note that if you guys are traders or if you are any type of you know, investor or you're involved in cryptocurrency, what I highly suggest is make sure you guys are using two-factor authentication, okay? It is something that I firmly am, firmly, firmly try to insist, all right? Make sure you guys are using 2FA. And if I can give you the best possible advice for protecting your 2FA, it would be this. I had um, a very good chat with one of my best friends, Mel, um, Mel is awesome. I'm going to be visiting her in Thailand sometime, hopefully at the end of May, hopefully early June. And um, her and I are just going to kind of travel and trade heavily together. And um, she was asking me for advice. So I wanted to give you guys the same type of advice as well. Okay. Make sure that you are using 2FA first of all. And I highly recommend two things. One is print off your 2FA guys. Okay. And if you are printing it off, right, you have a hard copy of it somewhere and also back up that picture or even the text version of it on a USB drive that's just kept offline. Never back it up in your Google Drive or in your email or anything like that at all or in like hidden on your computer. Keep that completely offline. And what I do for my 2FA is I actually just bought like, you know, a cheap tablet. It doesn't need to be a phone. It doesn't need to be... Um, or it doesn't need to be connected to the internet at all. So I just use, um, you know, like a cheap Samsung tablet, like $100, $150. I put my 2FA on there. And if I don't know if you guys actually know this, but 2FA for Google authentication, uh, Google two-factor authentication, you actually don't need to be connected to the internet for it to work, okay? So what I do... <coughs> excuse me, or what I've done is I just bought, you know, myself a, a Samsung tablet there. I created some random Joe email, like, you know, some, you know, something re like John Smith, um, 1922 or something like that, or, or Jane Smith, you know, 1945 or something like that. And just um, create that Play Store account, right? Just so you can actually log in and download the 2FA. You don't need to use your real Gmail account to access it on your tablet there or your cheap cell phone. And then once you have it installed um, in your device there, 
automatically, you know, turn off the Wi-Fi, right? Put it on airplane mode, and then put all of your security codes for the for the 2FA in your device there. But the point of this is you keep it on airplane mode, you keep a backup as well on a secure device, whether you're printing it off on a piece of paper or you're actually putting it on a USB drive, the point is that it's actually offline. Okay? You don't ever want to use your tablet or your phone or anything like that with 2FA that's connected to the internet. That is the biggest, that's a horrible thing to do. I don't know if you guys know, um, but Ian Balena or however you pronounce his name, Ian Bellina, he's a fairly prominent person in the community, and he was actually hacked today, okay? He was hacked today for a few million dollars, and um, he's a fairly big influencer in the crypto community. Um, I think he actually has a hedge fund as well for people, and um, you know, he's a pretty, pretty heavy player in the game, and I just thought I'd bring this up really quickly because um, I was recently targeted as well, as you guys know, for a fairly large amount there, and... Um, yeah, to me, I guess um, I'm okay, I'm okay with it. I I didn't deserve it, right? But um, sometimes you have to make mistakes in order to learn your lesson, right? Otherwise, you don't really learn from it. It's kind of like trading as well. The more that you lose, the more you can take away from these invaluable lessons because the best lessons come from when things go bad. So I hope that you guys can um, take my just general advice with how to treat 2FA, okay? Because it's one of the most important things. I don't know if you guys know how easy it is to actually click on a simple phishing link that can clone your entire phone or get backup or get backups to your email as well okay and um yeah especially for the email that's associated with your account um, if you're using gmail please make sure that you have a phone number registered to it a very safe one as well please make sure you're using 2fa right not just clicking on the phone to log in but actually 2fa the method that i described earlier um, please make sure that you're printing off the 10 backup codes as well, right? The 10 backup codes, just in case someone does get access to your 2FA and your password and they forget to change the 10 secret backup codes there, you can use one of those backup codes to actually supersede the original logins of the password and the 2FA as well. And please make sure you're also creating that USB key, okay? Um, just as an example, um, you know, for my Gmail account, I've got like a tiny little... Um, a little USB drive here that I'm always keeping, right? These USB drives is a backup code that also supersedes all the previous types as well. So in case these hackers do gain access to your Gmail and they only change the password and perhaps the phone number and the 2FA, you can actually still get in fairly safely as well. And I do recommend that you guys change your password every so often as well. I change my passwords every 15 days and I use a random password generator that is about I think 18 characters long. It's got a combination of lowercase, uppercase, special symbols as well. Um, you know, and and uh, it's really important that you guys mix up your passwords and don't choose like you know your dog's name or 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 your bank account pin number, especially as well. And another advice I'd like to give to people is please make sure you're using a VPN. Okay. Make sure you're using a VPN because that's incredibly important. Um, a VPN is basically some something that lets you tunnel from another country. So if you're using a VPN, um, you can have your location actually from you know somewhere else, and it makes it a lot harder for these hackers to find out where your location is. Because the last thing that I want, guys, is for um, I'm just going to lower my camera here a little bit. I think it's a little bit too high. The last thing I want is to see a lot of people actually get compromised. I've been there myself, and it's not a fun thing, guys. Okay, It's definitely not a fun thing at all. It's um, terrifying as well. I've had many good friends, and uh, one good friend especially recently who... Um, has She's been going through some tough times, and... Um, and um, and you know, just just making sure that security is top notch priority, and you have to take these necessary steps to prevent yourself from getting compromised. So, anyways, I just wanted to brush up on that topic very quickly because um, I think that it's very underrated the way that people actually treat security, right? 
Um, you know, there's many other ways to shoot as well. You can make sure you guys have an antivirus. Please make sure you have an antivirus. If you guys are a professional trader and you are serious about trading and you do this for a living, please don't mix up your work computer with your with your you know your your personal computer as well, right? I have a computer that's specifically dedicated for trading. And I have um, uh, and I also uh, it's, it's dedicated for basically purely work, right? So it's for work, it's for crypto, it's for YouTube, it's for Steam it as well, and and for Twitter, right? But in terms of actually personally browsing and you know torrents, for example, if you guys are into that as well, Facebook perhaps, you know Google Hangouts, whatever. Make sure that you guys are all doing this on another computer, okay? Because the more that you guys have on one computer in terms of doing everything, it's kind of like keeping your life in, on, on a phone, right? Um, that's not really a good thing to do as well. I am I'm a little bit paranoid about you know cell phones here, so I, I keep um like I actually I literally just you know I keep two cell phones, right? It's really important for you guys to have multiple cell phones for different things as well, just in case as well. So um anyways, um a virtual box is another really good thing to do as well, right? Virtual box, um, it kind of it isolates the problem in one specific container, so it doesn't affect the you know the main computer. That's something that's really good as well. And if you guys are serious about trading and you're you're playing with a lot of money, I would even encourage you to hire somebody professionally in the city. Never hire somebody just from online that you've met. Okay, make sure that you're actually dealing with someone physically in person. So when I hear of people getting hacked like in Belina, it was kind of a scary thing, right? The last thing that we want is to hear more about these types of stories that's going to widely affect the cryptocurrency community. So anyways, let's get into this technical analysis. Um, but firstly, I wanted to start off with how there's people thinking right now that um, after, okay, after tax season, April 17th, basically, that there's going to be a flood of money coming into Bitcoin. Well, don't hold your breath, guys. Okay? Please don't bank on it too much. That's also the same mentality as Chinese New Year's, if you guys remember. When was Chinese New Year's? It was um, February. It was like sometime in February, I remember that, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So please don't hold your breath and count on the fact that there's going to be a flood of money coming in after this tax season since people have filed it already and it's kind of like for Chinese New Year's where everyone was saying that yeah we're going to be in a very bullish market right after Chinese New Year's um, but you know what it was more so coincidence than anything uh, when was it 2018 it was for, uh, Friday February the 16th right that's when it was this year but of course the uh, the bear the short-term bear market ended um, February the 6th instead right so kind of a little bit misleading. I just don't want you guys to hold your breath for something like that. So for Bitcoin right now, we are actually trending at um, $136 billion for the market cap of Bitcoin. Overall cryptocurrency market capitalization, we are at $325 billion. That's a very comfortable place to be at, in my opinion. Coins like Cardano are receiving a lot of the attention right now, with it being number 7 at 14%, double digit, and Verge as well. <coughs> Excuse me there. So Verge is doing incredibly well after reaching its target. If you guys remember me tweeting about Verge, which I just would like to show you guys very quickly. Okay. I just tweeted this as well. Everybody thought that I was causing some sort of FUD. Okay. I just want to be very clear with what I said about Verge. So Verge, what I said was we were most likely going to reach somewhere between here. Okay, let's do this right there. I mentioned that we would reach between 722 and 963 Satoshi, right? So, and I also mentioned that in particular, this one right here would be a better count. Okay, take a look at it. More likely 965 Satoshi. And a lot of people actually called me um, a, a fudder, right? Which I said, which most likely bounces off the 200 EMA. So, you know, Verge actually bounced off of 974. My apologies for being 10 Satoshi off. 
but I just want to show you guys the power of technical analysis. And since we are talking about some coins right now that are doing well, Verge is definitely one of those double digit hitters right now. Populous as well, which is doing 40% right now in the green. But what we can see is that the majority of the coins are actually in the red and they are following suit to what Bitcoin is doing right now. So Bitcoin right now is trending at a 24 hour volume that has slowly diminished over the past three days. And with it slowly diminishing, what we can probably count on, <coughs> let me have a sip of my water, sorry guys. What we can actually count on is most likely a slow and steady drop in my personal opinion. We were trending heavily after that very massive volume spike. Do you guys remember that one hour volume spike? It was actually the highest one hour volume that we have ever had in the cryptocurrency history. That's something to give it. So we were seeing a trend around 9 billion and then we see a trend at 7.7 .7 billion right here, right? 8.9 billion, 7.7 .7 billion, not so bad right around there, but we're because the 24 hour volume is slowly trending lower, something that we could assume is that perhaps it's time for a correction process, right? That could be definitely one of the things that could be going on now. And we have to take a look at it from multiple different re resistance and support points. So let's take a look first of all on the daily chart in a non or sorry, in a log scale. We want to take a look at it in a log scale because we are taking a look at it from the course of about three months, right? Over the span of three months, it just might make more sense to take a look at it from a log scale. So let's say that we actually drew a line just that's simply just going like that, right? If it's a line that's going like that, well, it's interacting with a few specific points right here, right here, right here, and not yet right here, right? But we do have to acknowledge this right here as it's going to be a fairly key region for it to break. Now, I talked about in many of my other videos before that 8,500 was going to be a very pivotal number where there was a lot of price history before of had, having price action there and volume as well. So historically, it's a fairly relevant number. Now, we can easily anticipate that when it does, or if it does get to perhaps one of these regions right there, actually, let's actually slope it to make it look a little bit better on a lower time frame. If I actually go to, for example, a time frame like this right here, what we can easily deduce is that perhaps when it does get close to right about here, okay, around this particular range is where there's going to be a lot of activity and price action very easy to deduce that. Not only can we assume that, but we can also assume it'll most likely be somewhere around here as well, just based on how it's trending so far, right? So I mentioned that if we broke, guys, I mentioned if we broke above, okay, I'm going to show you guys my steam it as well. So I was, I guess you can say I was definitely wrong about that, okay? So I was saying that um, just in my general videos, right? A break above 8240 signals a rally to 8600 to 8850. It kind of contradicted what I was saying because um, in my video as well, I was saying 8500 was a very hard support and we were sort of hard resistance and we simply couldn't break that. Instead, we ended up getting to 8458 there. So unfortunately, we just couldn't break it guys um, there's just so much activity in this particular region so let's do a quick Elliott wave count to catch you guys up it's getting a little bit late at night and um, I'm ready to call it a night to be honest already so this is the way that I'm particularly seeing this right now over here okay I definitely see this hitting somewhere down to this region to be very specific with my Elliott wave count in here, um, I don't want to count this entire structure because we've done that before. But the way that I'm actually going to count this is now as subwaves one, subwaves two, pretty much subwaves three in there, four, and this is going to be the fifth wave just going upwards like that. This seems to make a lot of sense to me, right? Where it goes one, two, three, four, five, just simply like that going up there. So, which signals to me that, first of all, 
we need to go over some theory, guys. The theory is always one of the most important parts. So let's go to Elliott Wave Theory from a very basic level. Elliott Wave says that we have one, two, three, four, and five waves going upwards, just like this right here, okay? Five waves going up like that, like that, okay? This makes sense. And then what we usually find is wave one will act as a very hard support because it was previously a resistance. What was previously a resistance will now act as a support. So when the wave four starts to drop, it doesn't mean that it's always going to get to this territory. But what it does symbolically mean because of here is that it could reach up to right around here. That's important to understand the theories of Elliott wave, which says that wave four we can only retrace to wave one territory by about a wick, okay? That's going to make sense a lot. Once again, because wave one, <coughs> excuse me, let me have a sip of water. Because wave one, all right, acted as a resistance here, wave four will act as a support up to this point in particular. It also says that According to Elliott Wave, Wave 4 usually does not retrace into Wave 1 territory by more than a wick. You can get these wicks that retrace into that region in very highly leveraged markets such as Bitcoin. So we have to remember these basic rules of EW. And if we follow them, they tend to be very accurate most of the time. So the people who are investing in Bitcoin very long term, okay? I know that you guys might be worried right now, and I always have to state that I'm no financial advice. But if you guys are holding Bitcoin long term, and you bought at, you know, whatever, 8400 or 8200 does it really matter that much, guys, okay, if we are indeed at the end of a bull run? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think Bitcoin is going to get to 4000 5000 6000 ranges again. If it does get there, we've got some very large supports that it must break first. So the people that are very bearish right now, and they're saying four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 scenarios, that's just thinking, okay? Thinking is one thing. Feeling is one thing. And then technical analysis is something completely different. Now, unfortunately, markets are not decided by sentiment. So regardless of what people are thinking, or what they are feeling, put your mouth, put your money where your mouth is, okay? If you really believe it's actually going to get there, short the market. If you have any proof that it's going to get there, show a chart. Show a chart. Don't just think it and feel it because, guys, trading is not about thinking and feeling like that, okay? It's about proof in the pudding with very specific resistances and supports that are established already. And we also use a bunch of other theories. Some people like Wyckoff. Some people like Wolf Theory, right? Some people use um, use um, TD Sequential. I use Elliott Wave. I use resistances, supports, and moving averages as well, and especially Histogram and RSI. So if we are looking now, at here, I clearly see my five wave count. And also what I do see very clearly is that this is my wave one territory. So it's very difficult for me to assume anything otherwise, other than um, this could possibly be one of the regions that it gets to. Now, it's not wise to just buy on the support like that. It's in my opinion, I think it's gonna be tested at least twice here where it's gonna bounce off of it and perhaps do a double bounce on it. But in my personal opinion, catching a falling knife is not usually the best thing to do. Excuse me. Now, if you were to actually buy a little bit of your position there and you enter, Maybe only answer with 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 percent at most of your actual position, okay? But other than that, guys, it's not wise to enter in one big go always. You always have to test the waters, you always have to dollar cost average your buys to make sure that you're getting the absolute best average price, especially if you're playing with a lot of money. If you're playing with over, say, a hundred thousand dollars, it makes no sense for you guys to buy in one market execution at any given time. Always make sure that your dollar cost averaging, excuse me, my microphone makes my ear a little bit itchy there. Always make sure your dollar cost averaging. This way, you know, just you, you don't take one shot only, right? You try to get the best average price. It's really important to do that. So if we actually take a fib retracement here of this particular wave, where I believe it is, 
you know, I'm going to guess that it could be anywhere between one of these particular regions. I have no choice but to assume that 0.5 Fibonacci level will hold very strong. I think there's going to be a lot of people that will actually end up rushing in to buy at this particular point, okay? Now, we are definitely in a bearish trend right now, guys. There's no way to look at this in any other way. This is the first time since April the 12th here where we're even touching the 55 moving average, which is very significant. Now, in my personal opinion, I do believe that we're going to get to, uh, in a log scale here, we're going to end up touching this right here. And eventually, guys, if we actually, if it all goes well, I'm not kidding, okay? If it all goes well, and if this one right there did pretty much an exact 161.8 extension, okay? Notice how this one did a 161.8 extension right there. Well, heck, there's a chance for us to actually get to possibly the 9,377 range as well, okay? So if we actually break to this particular region right here, right? And we're, we're going to break out of many, many things, guys. We're going to break out of this massive sloped resistance line that we see forming since December the 17th there. That'll be pretty awesome if we break out of it, right? And all the five possible waves will be done. Okay, this is just hypothetically speaking. Now, this is what I'm banking on. So we have to remember the fact that as a trader, no one is ever going to be right 100% of the time. But what we try to do is be more right than wrong. Now, this is my, one of my main hypotheses right now and one of my main theories that I do believe it is going to bounce off of at least 7,500. Might be 76, might be 77, but I'm just saying in general that 7,500 is going to be a very, very strong support zone. Now, if we actually achieve these numbers and broke above there, then we are most likely going to break out of this massive resistance that we see here forming since December 17, and then we will retrace to a very respectable amount, which will be awesome which would be bouncing specifically off of this resistance that will now act as a very hard support. So please remember that what was previously a support will always now act as a resistance, right? And what was a resistance will also act as a support. So if we take a look at this massive resistance, let's say we ended up breaking out of it just for longer term, okay? If we broke out of it, then we'll correct to somewhere above this previous resistance that will now act as a support, and it could roughly be anywhere between these ranges. So that's just me speculating a little bit further down the road, looking into May. So I do believe, guys, that um, you know, May, like think think about the quarters, right? Um, we had um, you know, January, February, March. That's the first quarter, and then we got April, May, and June, right? April, May, and June, and everybody's saying that in the second quarter, in the late second quarter, that's where we're going to get our bullish market, right? So if we like, take a look at here near the end of April, we could very much so get our bullish market, right? Our bullish short-term trend, and then we spend a lot of May correcting, okay? We spend a lot of uh, May correcting, and then, guys, and then look, look, looky, looky over here, okay? Looky, looky, this is where June is, right? This is late May, late June, and that's the late second quarter that we have. So after we get down to over here, perhaps, this is where we're going to start our third wave. Hmm. Interesting, right? So I'm just speculating long term that this could actually be a very, very profitable few months coming up, guys. So please don't lose, don't lose um, sight of the prize and long term, okay? Now, the only way for me to invalidate this bullish count would be simple. How to bullish, how to invalidate this bullish count right here? A hard drop, hard drop below 7,500. I'm talking getting to like, you know, the 618 regions. And then that will invalidate it pretty much because then we have a rule breaking for Elliott Wave that says that Wave 4 is now retracing heavily into the Wave 1 territory. So these are my quick thoughts for Bitcoin. I know it was a lot of information to take in here. I have been gone for about two to three days. So um, I'm trying to catch up with everything myself here. So I apologize for the delay with, um, with updates coming in soon. But I also wanted to give you guys kind of like a 
a little bit of a longer term trend, you can say a little bit more of a medium term, not long term, like investor level, but long term to me as a day trader, which is kind of like, you know, a month or two at most as a longer term trader. Um, day traders, guys, long term to them is like literally a month in crypto world. Like, so yeah, so I cannot help but assume right now that um, um that for me to wait and buy, to me, the play was too small to buy above the break of 8,250 the you know, 8,600 to 8,800 even, right? I would like to make a decisive play that will confirm basically where we're going to round off for this wave four here. And then that's going to be a good place for me to accumulate 25, 50% of my position size. And then I'll end up buying even more on a breakout or as we inch closer and closer towards the 8458 range to the 8500 range where we're going to break out of that. And that will actually confirm our fifth impulse wave going up. So I'm being extremely patient right now. I'm more so trading EOS and Ripple and IOTA and Litecoin and NEO, right? So those are kind of, and Omizi Go, those are kind of the coins that I'm also interested in day trading as well right now because I do see a lot of potential coming up right now. I got 99 problems and 8K81. Sorry, guys, just had to say that right there because it was $7,999. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to say I got 9,999 problems and 8K is another one. <laughs> That's more so what I meant to say. So you guys have my targets, all right? I mean, for all we know, if I look at it on the non-bearish side, right? I mean, this could very well be the bottom, but it's very hard for me to think that. And the reason why it's hard for me to think that right now is because for the first time since... um. Since when? Since like March the 10th, right? Which was seven days ago. We actually see the 200 moving average, or sorry, the 100 moving average being actually shattered and where we're trending well below it. So for the past 24 hours now, we see it trending below the 100 moving average, right? Or sorry, the 55 moving average. So for the past 24 hours in general, yeah, we're definitely trending below it. And because we cannot stay above the 100 or the 55 moving average um, with a steady pace right now, we can only assume that since it's trending below it, that a correction is most likely to happen first, okay? So, you know, I, I do believe that we can get some sort of ABC correction that can go somewhere down over here, right? It's, you know, it's just something very simple like that, right? That could very well make sense in here as well. But you guys have to remember that we've had a very big run already, okay? So don't get too greedy with the big run. And also, you guys got to make sure that you stick to your stop losses. So if we actually if we actually do Fibonacci extension here as well, um, you know, we're getting pretty much the perfect one-to-one -one extension that happens to be right at the 7,500 to the 7,488 range as well, right? So the stars are kind of lining up right now, guys. I mean, and you guys got to make sure that, you know, whether you're, whether you bought there at 80, you guys got to ask yourself first, okay? You guys have to keep in mind one thing that's very important to remember that I am a day trader and these videos that I am making, they're all geared towards specifically day traders and sometimes it'll pertain to a swing trader as well. But in terms of investing long term, you guys got to keep in mind that I'm not necessarily the best guy for that. I will do sometimes a longer term analysis like how I did prior talking about the 8,300 or sort of 9,300 ranges. But please remember that the majority of my videos are all focused towards day trading. OK, I don't want to mislead you guys. But what I need to let you guys know is that you need to ask yourselves, first of all, what kind of trader you are. OK. Are you a trader? Are you a swing trader? Are you a day trader? Are you an investor? What kind of trading are you guys doing? How are you trying to grow your money? Okay. Now, if you guys are an investor, you really need to understand that there's nothing to worry about. Okay. If you guys are worried about these two, three, four hundred dollar swings as an investor, you got to change your mindset because maybe you're not really an investor. Maybe you're trying to be a day trader or swing trader, but, but with, you know, 
but your mentality is actually as a day trader or swing trader, but you're trying to invest, right? So that needs to be dispelled and you guys need to figure out what kind of player are you in the game? And that's going to ultimately lead to your success as well, okay? You cannot invest with the, tr mind with the mindset of a day trader and you cannot be a day trader with the mindset of an investor long term. You guys got to remember that a day trader tries to capitalize on the volatility and the small price movements and the swings uh, for that particular day only, where we will rarely, rarely, rarely hold positions overnight. I never, honestly, anymore hold positions overnight. I don't even put up limit orders at night anymore either as a day trader. Now, I rarely swing now. It's maybe one or two trades a month where I swing trade. And in terms of investing, that's a completely different story. I like to look for setups where I can catch the bottom as an investor. And I simply adopt the hold and forget strategy, like how I did with Verge, sort of, right? Well, that was more like a one month hold. And then Sia coin, that's kind of one of my longer term holds as well, okay? So please remember that these are geared towards day traders. Now, you guys always got to make sure that you also understand that trading, guys, it's one of those things or even investing that you have to know how to stick to your stop loss, okay? Sticking to your stop loss is incredibly important. Now, the people don't grow their money by just holding and saying it's going to recover. That might only work for a little while, but there will come a time where it's going to dip down too low and your, your um, what's the word here, your your courage to hold will eventually diminish and you're not going to have that courage to hold anymore because you're just going to end up selling on the bottom you know maybe one out of 20 times and that one out of 20 times will be disastrous okay so make sure that you're absolutely sticking to your stop losses if you guys are one of the people that actually bought at 8200 okay maybe you guys made a mistake there maybe you guys didn't think of the 8500 as an actual hard resistance maybe you thought it was going to get to 8800 just because some random guy like me might have just simply said that right well got to make sure you guys understand that you are making your own decisions and you simply cannot just follow someone blindly. You have to make sure that you're looking at these technical indicators to see where, if it could possibly have the strength and the momentum to actually get there. And if it doesn't, you guys got to decide for yourselves if it's time to take profit. Is it time to break even? Is it take time to take some of my profit? Is it time to just hold some of it? Where are my emotions during this particular state? Can I mentally persevere? through holding it a little bit longer and can I stick to my stop losses so there's a big mental game that you guys need to follow as well when it comes to stop losses okay now the what differentiates really good traders from okay traders is their ability to take pain and their ability to actually stay in the game can you stay in the game can you guys stay in the game you need to make sure that you understand that um that you know you got to be tough you got to have a really big thick skin in this game you got to have a certain type of personality trait that can allow you to be a winner but most importantly you got to stick to your stop losses and you got to make sure that you you learn from the valuable lessons if you're holding or if you're losing especially okay so these are where my personal, I have a really dry throat today. I think it's because I drank too much beer on the weekend for my Laos New Year's there. So I apologize if I, if my voice sounded a little bit dry there as well. So other than that, guys, you guys have my short-term prediction. I would simply see us breaking to, you know, the 75, 7,600 range, maybe even 7,400 range. Longer term, I do believe we're going to hit up to 8377 range and then after that you know right before um like right early may or so right before june i do believe we're going to crack down to here so I'm more more so doing a, a a very limited type of analysis but it's just for extrapolation now extrapolation is taking a finite set of data and you're trying to guess the next set of data just based on what you have already. You guys know what they say about people who extrapolate, right? There are those who extrapolate and then there are those who... Anybody get that joke? Because I thought it was hilarious the first time and the second time and the tenth time as well. <laughs> okay, anyways, this... Yeah, those, those kind of jokes, they are only probably funny to me 
if you guys actually like that joke, post your comment below and say that you got the joke and you found it funny. Get it? There are those who extrapolate, and then there are those who... <laughs> it's still funny seeing it again. So anyways, you guys have my predictions there. I'm going to end the video because I feel that it was a little bit short. But on that, make sure you guys are also taking care of your security, okay? Security is um, very important. Make sure you're taking a look at VPNs. Make sure you guys are securing your 2FA. I don't like to hear about people getting hacked or getting scared off of Twitter, etc. like that. And my heart goes out to all the people that have been affected by that before. So other than that, traders, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for watching this video, for all the love and the support. If you guys absolutely love my videos, make sure that you guys go to Steam it. If you guys don't know how to, upvote my content. You guys can simply just make a quick little Steemit account there. Sometimes I get $13 a post. I usually end up averaging about $10 to $20 a day of profit just for all the hard work that I'm doing for the cryptocurrency community. And all this money actually goes straight to my dog's tequila fun. Just as an example, guys, okay? Um, just as an example right here, you know, I, I, I'm very clear about where the money goes, okay? Um, well, you guys can, if you guys want to donate cryptocurrency, it goes towards my dog, Luna, her alcoholic fund, okay? Because it's not fair for me to actually spend my own money on my dog's drinking problem. It's much better for you guys to support my dog and her drinking problems because why would I want to do that as her dad? Why would I want to pay out of my own pocket to support her alcoholic habits. It's more important for you guys to support my dog's alcoholic habits by donating to the cryptocurrency piggy bank if you guys would like to buy her a 2-6 or an 8-pack of beer. And also all the all the upvotes that you guys give me, it go, also goes towards her alcoholic fund as well. So you guys are welcome to click on this little upvote button, which only takes a second of your time. Other than that, guys, thank you very much for all the love and the support always. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and I will be sure to catch you guys tomorrow with another update as well. So take care now. Bye. See you guys.